Okay, so Cursor 2.0 just dropped. It's a massive, exciting update. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through all the new features. I'll show you how it works, and then we'll test it out live inside the new interface. When you open up Cursor, you'll now see a panel at the bottom left that says what's new. Cursor 2.0 is here. This is basically a quick rundown of what's changed, and it's all about agents. So first up, we have Composer 1. This is Cursor's brand new coding model. It's built specifically for agentic development and a focus on speed, so it's very fast. It's about four times faster than other models, and most processes finish in under 30 seconds. Next, we have the multi-agent interface. So instead of focusing on files, Cursor 2.0 is now built entirely around agents. So you can have multiple agents working in parallel, even tackling the same problem from different angles, and then you can pick the best results. So that's a possibility here with this multi-agent framework. Finally, we can see here it says run agents in parallel. So this is where things get really exciting. You can spin up multiple models locally or in the cloud using Git work trees. It's faster, more flexible, and it's built for real multi-agent workflows. So there's a lot of potential here. So let's get started. We'll click on the Get Started with 2.0 button here on the panel. That's going to open up our new interface here in Cursor. And we can see on the left-hand side, we've now got agents rather than our project directory. This is where you can create, rename, and manage multiple agents. Each one can work on a completely different task or even use a different model. In the center here is your main agent workspace. You can give it high-level instructions like design a landing page or refactor my code base, and it'll plan and execute using Composer 1 or whatever model you've selected. Before we jump in, I just want to clarify exactly what we mean when we say agent in this context. So in Cursor 2.0, an agent is basically an AI developer. It has its own context, its own goal, and it can plan, write, and edit code on its own. So think of it like having a small dev team inside your IDE, one agent might handle the UI design, another agent might focus on back-end logic, another might run tests or review code, and they can all run in parallel without stepping on each other's work. So the big advantage here is specialization and speed. You can build the context around each agent's specialized area, and that's going to get you more precise and better quality code and results because they're focusing on one specific thing rather than trying to do everything that you want to do. Okay, so I'm now inside my Snapper AI website directory. This is the actual project I use for my site, snapperai.io. Let's use this to show how agents work in a real project. So I'm going to start by creating my first agent. We'll call this our UI agent. First, I'm going to start by giving it context on what its role is. So you can see here, I'm going to say you are the UI agent for the Snapper AI website. Your role is to handle all visual design, layout, and styling decisions across the project. You specialize in modern, responsive web design using Tailwind CSS and React components. You understand the brand style, clean, minimal, and professional. We're also going to use Composer 1 as the model here, just to test that out. This is a basic example of context you can provide to establish a role for each agent. You can go really in-depth here and spend some time creating some really powerful context-setting prompts and that's going to give you probably better results as you build out your multi-agent workflow. But for now, we'll just use this simple straightforward prompt. We'll hit enter. That's going to set the context here for our first agent. We can see it has reviewed the current design system and it's confirmed some information about our website, the color palette, the dark purple gradient backgrounds, accent colors, design patterns. It's confirmed the tech stack we're working with. And it has confirmed now I can help with page layouts and component design, styling updates and refinements, responsive design improvements, new UI components, design system consistency, visual polish and animations, and then finally, what would you like to work on next? So we've got our first agent set up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the left-hand sidebar here where we have our agents. I'll click these three dots here where it says more actions, and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it UI agent. So now we have a clear label here that identifies that this is our UI agent. Next, we can give it a task. So I'm going to say review the home page in this project and suggest a cleaner, more modern layout. So we can see Composer 1 has responded. It finished in 11.3 seconds. Again, a highlight there of the focus on being a fast model. So 11.3 seconds is a very quick response. We can then see that Composer 1 has provided some feedback. We've got design review and recommendations. Number one, layout and structure, strengths, clear section hierarchy, responsive grid patterns, consistent card-based components. Issues, template offering section is too wide, 
Hero and CTA sections duplicate the same form, reduce repetition. Tools grid lacks visual hierarchy, feels flat compared to template cards. It's then got some recommendations, narrow the template offerings, consider a three column layout on large screens for template cards, add a skip to templates link in the hero to reduce scroll. We've then got some more feedback on spacing and typography, modern design patterns, component organization. We've got some issues, 500 plus lines in one file. So now it's looking at the code on the back end and suggesting some changes. It wants to extract some components, for example. It's got typography improvements. Hero headline could be more impactful. No font weight variations beyond bold. Missing letter spacing for large text. Some more recommendations. It's actually giving me some code recommendations here. Visual hierarchy, spacing consistency, accessibility and UX, code organization, finally specific layout improvements for each section. So this is a very detailed response that's been created in 11.3 seconds. Pretty impressive. So another cool feature with Cursor 2.0 is we can actually open up a browser window. So if we hit Control Shift B, that's going to open up a window here on the right for our browser. We can see here we can then type in our URL into this bar at the top, snapperai.io, hit enter and then you'll have a view of your browser on the right hand side. We can see here on the right hand side we have a view of our live website. The feedback on the left hand side that Composer 1 has provided is directly related to this exact home page that we can see. So this is a good way if you want to review some suggestions in planning mode. You can actually walk through this, read the feedback, and then look at the website on the right-hand side and compare the actual feedback directly to what you can see on the website. Also handy to use in dev mode. So if you're making live changes with Hot Reload, you can actually get dev mode up on the right-hand side and see the changes applied in real time. That's what we'll do next as we ask Composer 1 to implement the changes. Okay, so we've now got the website running in dev mode on the right hand side so any changes we now make we will see them reflected in real time on the right. What I'm going to do now is show you the real power of Cursor 2.0 so rather than asking UI agent to implement the changes here what I'm actually going to do is spin up a new agent so on the left hand side if we click new agent that's going to open up a new window here so we're in a brand new chat window with fresh context. Let's switch the model over to GPT-5 Codex. So I found that Codex is a really good model to use when you're actually writing code. So we'll use that in this instance for our coding agent. And again, this is a really good example of how powerful Cursor 2.0 can be here. We can spin up a new agent with a different model. So if we find a model that is really good at a particular task, in this instance, we think Codex is a really good model for actually writing code. We can spin up a model specifically for that use case. We're going to paste here with our context setting prompt. So we're saying you are the coding agent for the Snapper AI website. Some more information and context here on the directory that it is working in. We'll hit enter. So that's going to set context for coding agent. It's already reviewed that and set that context. It's ready to implement the UI agent's recommendations. So we'll quickly rename this now as coding agent so we've now got two agents that we've spun up in our workspace here we've got ui agent and we've now got coding agent now what we'll do is we'll flick back to ui agent and we'll say summarize your recommendations into bullet points and provide it as a prompt for coding agent to execute so we'll hit enter here we've used ui agent for the specific task of reviewing the landing page from a ui perspective it's successfully done that now what we want to do is turn that into a prompt that we can give to coding agent so it can then execute these recommendations. We can see it's finished here, so we can copy the message. It's also saved it as an actual markdown file in our directory. So we can also click review if we want to open it up on the sidebar here and just have a look. So we can see that we're happy with that. So we'll copy that. We can close that so we've now got our website view back. We'll flick over to coding agent. We'll hit paste with this updated prompt and our coding agent will be able to execute the task and implement these changes. We can see that Codex is now executing the tasks here. Another thing to note is Composer 1, which is Cursor's model, is built on speed. So you've seen so far that the task we've asked it to do it has executed really quickly. 
that's where maybe something like a coding implementation might not be great to use. If its priority is speed, it may not be the best at actually producing sound code. Something we need to test, I haven't tested that yet, so that's just an assumption. But if you want to be thorough and use a model that you think is designed for coding, then that's potentially where you could use something like Codex. In this case, it's taking a bit longer to execute, uh, but that's what we want. We want it to take its time and make sure that it's implementing sound code. So we'll let it continue to work and update these changes. Okay, so while Codex is working, let's actually spin up a third agent. So as we can see, Codex is now executing all of those tasks. We can let it go ahead and work in the background. Meanwhile, we can spin up a new agent. Let's use Sonnet 4.5 for this agent. And what we'll do here is add context here. You are the copywriting agent for the Snapper AI website. Your role is to review and improve all on-site copy, headlines, subheadings, and body text to make it clearer, more engaging, and aligned with the Snapper AI brand voice. We've got some tone, goals, and some more context here. So we'll hit enter. So what we'll be able to see here is on the left-hand side, coding agent is still working. We can see it's planning its next moves and still executing that task of updating the website. Meanwhile, we've moved on to a different task. We're now building our copywriting agent. So coding agent is going to implement the fixes to the actual code base to improve the website UI. What we can also do in the meantime is review and improve the actual copy on the home page. So we've got two agents running in parallel here executing different tasks. We can see at the top of the response from Sonnet 4.5 here, it has said, I've reviewed all the copy across the Snapper AI website. Let me provide you with a comprehensive copywriting review with specific improvements for each page. Maintaining the Snapper AI brand voice, confident but friendly, conversational and focused on creativity, AI tools and innovation. And you can see that's what it's doing here. It's reviewing the copy on the website and making suggestions. What we're going to do now is just rename this to copywriting agent. So we've got a clear label and we know exactly what the purpose of this agent is. It finished in 1.6 minutes. As we can see, it's reviewed the entire website. It's suggested changes for each page, each section on the website. So what I'll do here, just to simplify it for the example of this video, I'll say just share your feedback for the home page only. So we can now see both copywriting agent and coding agent have completed their tasks. We've now got the updated version of our website on the right hand side. So we can see the copies changed. Some of the layout has also changed. So there's an added section here to introduce the template section and a few videos we've got featured. So this section has been changed. So the grids changed and these uh, icons have changed. We've also then got a new box here. So we did have a form the same as what's at the top of the page. It has changed that to a box here with two buttons, browse templates or subscribe for playbooks. So it has made the updates. Coding agent has completed its task and copywriting agent has also completed its task. So there's an example of how you can build a multi-agent workflow using Cursor 2.0, spin up multiple agents, get a lot done at the same time so you can get GPT-5 Codex working on those longer, more complex tasks while you use other models to implement other things, features and tasks within your project. So we've built three specialized agents with specific roles and we can see that each uses a different model. So you can build specialized agents that are really good at completing specific tasks and implementations and that's going to make your workflow a lot more powerful because you can get more done, you can run them in parallel and you can optimize them based on what agent is a best fit for each use case. Let's now take a look at another feature in Cursor 2.0, which is review mode. So we'll close the browser here. We'll drag this across. We can see in our copywriting agent chat, we have in the top right corner review. If we click that, that's going to open up this review tab. We can see here there's one pending change and then there's also an all changes. So we can see all the changes that have been made in this chat and then the pending change that we need to review and accept. We can also click on find issues, so that would start an agent review of this code to see if there are any issues. We can also review diff with main branch and review agent changes. For this video, let's just click on keep all. That's going to keep all of those changes that were made. So we can then go through and have a look specifically at what changes have been made 
by copywriting agent in this session. If we flick to coding agent, we'll see the same thing. There are two pending changes here as well as all changes so we can review everything. So this is handy as well if you're working on projects but you're not sure if you want to actually implement all those changes. So for example, there were a couple of formatting issues with this build that I did right now. So what I'm actually going to do is click undo all. I want to undo all of the changes that were made during this session. We can also choose split view here. So what that does is shows you the old version and the new version side by side. So if you prefer split view to review code changes, you can use that. Or you can use unified view, which then uh, displays the old version and the new version in the same file. So you can review all changes made by each agent in each session like this. Okay, so that was a look at review mode and how you can use that to review changes that the agents make and even undo changes that they've made if you want to revert back. I've actually done that. I've reverted everything back to the original website code base that we had before we started this video. Now I want to show you two more features of Cursor 2.0, planning mode and voice mode. So we're in agent mode. That's the mode we've been using in this video so far, but we can actually flick over to plan mode. This allows us to actually plan things out before making any changes. So if you just want to get some feedback or plan out an implementation before actually doing anything, that's when you want to use plan mode. We can also use voice mode. So rather than typing out prompts, we can actually speak prompts. So that's what I'm going to do for this next example. We'll hit the voice input button here on the right and I'll speak a prompt for copywriting agent. So I'll hit this now. Create a detailed plan for improving the copy across the Snapper AI homepage. Your plan should identify each section of the page, summarize the current tone and key issues in each section, propose improvements for clarity, flow and conversion, include example headlines or taglines where relevant, structure the plan in Markdown with clear headers and check boxes so I can improve or modify steps. Once the plan is ready, stop there, don't rewrite any copy yet. So we can hit enter there. So there's an example of voice mode in action. If you don't want to type all of your uh, prompts out, you can actually just use voice mode. So there's an example of how you can do that. And we can see here it's now executing the task. It's analyzing the home page and creating a detailed copywriting improvement plan. We can see here it's making a note of the existing content. And it's going to go through and make some recommendations. So again, this is an example of planning mode. A really good way to just get a to-do list or an implementation plan in place before you actually start any work. That will help you avoid potential issues if you just go ahead and start creating code and making changes right away. So I highly recommend planning mode and if you're not a big fan of typing and you find it easier just to use voice for prompting, Voice mode is also a really handy feature to use. So I hope you enjoyed that first look at Cursor 2.0 in action. In this session, we built a full multi-agent workflow. UI agent reviewed the design and laid out a full strategy. We then had the coding agent implement those changes live in the code base. And we had copywriting agent refine the website copy and use plan mode to map out some improvements. We used a different model for each. So UI agent used Composer 1, Cursor's new model. Coding agent used GPT-5 codex. And copywriting agent used Claude Sonnet 4.5. So we demonstrated the power of multi-agent workflows that can leverage specific models for specialized tasks. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. You can also head over to snapperai.io to sign up for updates. I'll have the link in the description below as well. I'll be sending out templates, tutorials, updates when I test uh, new videos and new tools come out. So if you want to stay updated, head over to snapperai.io, fill out the form, and you'll be on the list. If you want to see any videos on specific tools or workflows, let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.